What's shaking and baking? Hello, welcome one and all to Americans Learn. My name is Kit. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and be sure to hit the ring bell the notification. That way, all of you are made aware when we upload new content upon our YouTube channel. And today, 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 we have ourselves a fun and interesting video to check out here on our channel. Now, this is going to be something a little bit different from a different channel. It is from the channel called Hoser, and it's titled A Tale of Two Islands. So, I'm unfamiliar with this, but I do know that in from from some of our previous videos that we, we have been working on here on this channel, um, many of you have been saying, hey, you should check out this, or you should check out this type of series. So, we're only responding back to your feedback, and uh, more importantly, um, you know, we want to check out, uh, you know, different uh, historical events or countries or locations around the world. And uh, after all, this name of this channel is called Americans Learn. So uh, your feedback is fundamentally important. And if this is the kind of content all of you like, please tell us what you think. And if there's anything further we should check out, well, you got to type, type, type in the comment section below. But before we get started, again, the original link to this video is in the description box below. So please, please, please support the original content creators because a lot of time, effort, and energy is made into making these videos. So um, do the right thing and show them some love too. But without further ado, since I'm in charge of the ones and twos, let's get ready to check out this video in a three, a two, a one. Oops, there you go. In the Americas, there's a chain of islands. In that chain, there's a lumpy island called Hispaniola, the most populated in the Caribbean. And sitting on Hispaniola is not one, not three, but two separate countries. They are Haiti and the Dominican Republic. One side speaks Spanish, the other speaks Creole and French. One is mostly mixed, the other is mostly black. The cities are different, the industries are different, the music is different, the way of lives are different, and most importantly, while the Dominican is the fastest growing economy in the Americas, Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Damn, not even the poorest of the continent. It's the poorest of the hemisphere. On wow, um, I, why is it like that? Uh, obviously, we're going to find out, but, uh, geez, Louise, I, I, I never knew that. It's half of the earth. So if there's only one island, why are there two tails? Surely it can't be from the geography, can it? Hispaniola is one island, and yes, while most, okay, pretty much all the divergence comes from its history, we can give a little bit of the credit to geography. The island is full of mountains, plains, beaches, hurricanes, and more beaches. Pretty standard stuff. Most people live in the parallel valleys where the mountains are not, yet most of those people live inside of Haiti, actually having around half a million more people than the Dominican, making Haiti almost twice as densely populated. And while both countries were built off of agricultural plantations, if we zoom in, we can see that they're probably not equal in value. While the Dominican is green, Haiti is brown. From more people on less land, less rainfall on this third of this island, east flowing rivers, up to 80% of Haiti's energy still coming from wood, and a history that wasn't too concerned about the future of the island, its natural resources have been stripped. This means only around 2 to 30% of Haiti's land is actually forested, but around 45% of the Dominican is forested. The geography is definitely playing a role in keeping Haiti poor, but it's also likely a symptom of being poor for most of its history, creating a cycle which some might call vicious. Haiti was and still mostly is a subsistence farming economy, with riches directly tied to how many natural resources you can take. Wow. Um, that is definitely a tale of two islands. Um, the video uh, lives up to its name. Um, <clears throat> wow. Um, I, I guess uh, I would open this up to the audience. Uh, if you've ever been to Haiti or Dominican Republic, because uh, I've never been to those two countries, um, what was your overall experience? And if you're from those two regions, um, maybe you could help elaborate a little bit more, uh, especially in regards towards the history, the culture, or a few other things. Obviously, this video is going to uh, go into further detail if there's anything that, is, that this video has missed. Um, enlighten us with a, a few comments. You know, let's uh, all uh, be polite and um, find out more. But I am rather surprised uh, in regards just to how overall different the two nations are on one island. I never knew this. 
Haiti produces five times less than the Dominican, eight times less per capita. They trade nearly 10 times less than Domo. Almost all of what they do trade being cotton or natural resource related. Aid is scarce. The aid they do get has to deal with the rampant corruption and instability in the nation. There are constant blackouts. Food is uncertain, having to deal with rapidly shifting prices and relying on imported food with the little foreign reserves they have. When middle-aged Canadians fly to the Caribbean for the winter, let's just say they don't go to this part of the island. They'll probably be here sitting on the beach in Punta Cana. But that's too much comparison for me. Mr. Beat said he'd cover that for me. Ain't that right, Mr. Beat? Well, yeah, of course that's right. The Dominican Republic and Haiti compared. The two countries that share the- No, not in this video. Go do your own. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said I could take over your channel. No, 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 no. <laughs> you must be confused. I told you you could take over my flannel with an F. Oh, oh okay. But when do I get my flannel? I sent a bottle. It'll arrive soon. Awesome. Be sure to check out Mr. Beat's awesome video comparing Haiti and the Dominican Republic after you're done watching this one. The first foreign tourist and we here at uh, Americans Learn uh, say you should do the same thing too after you watch this video. Okay? After you're done watching this video. On the island were Columbus and his Spanish crew landing in 1492, and they liked it so much that they made a permanent settlement, Santo Domingo, four years later. The native islanders, the Taino, were not so impressed when their island was taken over, so they resisted the takeover, but the Spanish had guns, horses, and weird diseases. Not much you can do against that. They set up a very typical Spanish colonial economy, importing rich Spaniards and conquistadors to oversee plantations run by native laborers. What, you thought these rich landowners would sail across the entire ocean just so they can work? In this heat? No. <laughs> This kept most of the population poor, tied to their land, and working for their rulers not to see a dime or a peso of their production. But there were two reasons that made this island less successful than most of their other colonies. One, the native population on this fairly small island was, surprise, fairly small compared to other American civilizations. And if it wasn't small enough, disease, genocide, and forced labor helped to decimate the population as well. It wasn't the most moral. A story that's all too familiar, especially with Columbus, uh, and as well as the rest of the, well, Spanish, I guess, conquistadors coming here uh, to the Western Hemisphere uh, in Latin America and the Caribbeans. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, is, it is horrific and very sad what's happened to the native peoples. Oral time. They either just imported African slaves or two focused on these two areas instead, near modern-day Mexico and Peru. These were the Spanish piggy banks, where the gold, silver, food, and huge native populations were. Why well, come to this island where you could become a much richer man overseeing a Peruvian silver mine? As a result, they didn't spend much money investing in the island and much time governing the people. I mean, half of the island was literally used as a pirate outpost, mostly by French buccaneers in the 15 and 1600s. That's how the French got control of this part of the island. Not by colonizing it, but by docking pirates on the anarchic island. Formally getting it in a 1697 treaty calling it Saint-Domingue. The French flipped the script. If the Spanish half was decentralized and poor, the French were going to make this part overly centralized and rich for a very small portion of the population. They didn't use Taino labor, but imported African labor to work on plantations of cotton, tobacco, but mainly sugar. The small elite owned almost everything in the colony, including most of the people. Wow. It was the richest colony in the Americas and one of the richest places on earth for this small elite, but it wasn't sustainable at all. There were no new ideas, no education, no new technology, no new industry coming from this island. It was quite literally to extract resources, and that was its only purpose. Oh, so it's only just a... Wow. Okay. So if I had to bring a comparison, just the way the aristocracy was running it, um, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, of, of how the Bretonians from a Warhammer fantasy, uh, obviously it's not related to this, but in Warhammer fantasy, the Bretonians uh, have this really ridiculous feudal system where the lords and the princes and the kings control everything, and the vast majority, like 95% of the population, is in absolute poverty. So... Let's just say something like that is not only unsustainable, but um, 
you're going to get a lot of people angry at you. And that's uh, when the guillotine starts coming out and heads start rolling. It got to the point where soil erosion forced later Haitian generations to subsistence farming because all the dirt's nutrients were used for the money crops. Oh no. Two thirds of French investment by the late 1700s went to Saint Domingue selling these crops back to Europe. It was like growing literal cash crops and money trees, as long as you were fine with running one of the worst slave machines on earth. It was awful, back breaking, deadly, and many slaves escaped to the mountains to fight as maroons. And then the whole glorious liberation of the French people from the tyranny of the king happened during the French Revolution, promising all would have liberty, fraternity, and equality. Ironic, huh? But wait, there are at least 500,000 slaves and only around 32,000 Europeans in Saint Domingue. <laughs> oh. Wait. Over 15 slaves for every Frenchman. What if we just had our own glorious, bloody, liberating, deathly revolution, just like the French did? Well, you mess around, you find out. You mess around, you find out. 500,000 versus 32,000. I mean, it's, a, it's a numbers game. And so they did, defeating the French army in 1803 and declaring the Republic of Haiti, I mean Haiti, independent in 1804 as the only nation on earth created by slaves. From the very start, Haiti was kind of screwed. Sure, they were liberated and their rulers were uh, dead now, but the country was destroyed. Pretty much the only mode of production they had, the plantations were destroyed from the war. Relations with Europe were tenser than those Wild West towns only big enough for one person, including with the other part of the island, losing almost all their trade and foreign investment, and they were forced to pay reparations to France in order to be recognized. As much as 50% of government revenue at times, around $30 billion in total in today's money, went to pay the French reparations during the 1800s up until 1947. What? Haitian leaders have been forced to stop social services like education, healthcare, and general infrastructure just to pay this ridiculously large debt. But before you say, golly gee, that's a lot of debt. It is, but you also might want to consider the alternative, holy moly, that's barely any revenue. The majority of free Haitians went onto the land to farm at the subsistence level. Who owned this land? They didn't even know. After independence, there were revolts, uprisings, and even a civil war between two wannabe kings, eventually forcing many former slaves back onto plantations when order was restored. Haiti became a poor land of warlords which fought throughout the century. One of these fights was an occupation of Spanish Santo Domingo for 22 years in an attempt to free their slaves leading to their war for independence and achieving it in 1844 becoming the Dominican Republic. Like Haiti, our friend Mr. Dominican was poor and a little restless leading to in and out dictatorships and democracy even being a Spanish colony briefly again. But finally in the 1870s they started a new strategy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. Re read that book and get that big brain knowledge. Get the massive American market hooked on your product. What is it? Well, it's white. It's a power. Hmm. I, I wonder. I wonder what that magic magic sugar is. Outer, it's very addictive. You can make Coca-Cola with it. Mm. Many tropical Latin American countries make it, oftentimes having their political system overrun by the producers of it. That's right. It's sugar. Yes. The Dominican started. Oh, sugar. All right. Since I can't sing the rest of the song, type it in the comment section below. And yes, sugar is addicting. And one thing that enrages me, I read all the labels of food that I buy. My God, here in the United States, why does everything have freaking sugar in it? It's enraging. I hate, I, like, here's the thing. I like salsa, right? I, I love it. It's delicious, right? But, you know, there's only a couple of brands of salsa that, 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 that I buy that don't have sugar in it. The rest of them do. I find it gross. I find it absolutely gross. I'm insulted. I'm enraged. I don't like it. I don't I don't I don't like sugar in my food. That's just me. If it makes me a bad guy, I'm sorry, but how how do you feel about sugar being in your food? Type 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 in the comment section below. 
marketed to export cacao, coffee, but mainly Ooh. sugar to the USA. But it's a two-way street. You can't just be a small American nation the US now depends on and expect them not to use the Monroe Doctrine on you. At least that's what the Americans thought. So after the Americans won the Spanish-American War in 1898, they started to meddle a whole lot more in the Caribbean. Sugar companies started to dominate the Dominican financial sector and government. Europeans were left in the dust to sell this new booming sugar friendly market. <laughs> While the US <laughs> I'm 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 laughing at the picture. You got you got you got you got the bull addicted to the the white sugar. And of course you got the little you got the little Dominican Republic just it's just just smiling saying like, Alright buddy, here you go. The U.S. got more involved in their government paying for services like infrastructure, education, and even Dominican debt. They got directly involved in 1916 when they physically took over the island just in case the Germans tried something fishy with their new canal during World War I, not letting go until 1924, much after the war ended, with some administrators sticking around until even 1932. Meanwhile, they also occupied Haiti from 1915 to 1934 from what? the same German suspicions. Okay. Um, hey, uh, if we have any, I guess, World War One experts, but um, overall, because again, I I'm completely unfamiliar with this whole idea of Germania, using the old Roman term, uh, going into the Western Hemisphere. But was there any real legitimacy behind that of the Germans? I guess I don't know, launching an expedition into the Western Hemisphere or naval warfare um audience feedback if there's any kind of video we could we should check out here on our channel in regards towards maybe germany world war one and i guess the suspicion of it coming into our hemisphere th during that time frame or occupying lands or anything like that um give us your feedback uh, give us your thoughts is there anything we should check out because i was unaware i was unaware that uh I guess there was a lot of fear of Germany during the, uh, the First World War or what it, what people thought um, its logistics were during the First World War. The Haitian side was not nearly as prosperous under the U.S. with oh. over 15,000 oh. people killed during the regime, mass suppression, forced labor, and even segregation imposed in some places. Oh, yeah. So when it was time for real independence, Haiti was in even more poverty, violence, and incredible corruption by gangs and warlords, whereas the Dominican was just the usual type of poor and unequal found in most post-Spanish nations. But the Great Depression hit the Dominican hard, having built their economy on the idea of endless American demand for a seemingly endless American diet. Depression turned into revolution and soon the caudillo of all caudillos took charge, Rafael Trujillo. He ruled for 31 years and this guy had an iron fist. Under him, the Dominican turned into a military dictatorship. There were massacres, political opponents were killed, censorships, conformity to him, and theft. Theft of what? Well, pretty much everything. Trujillo loved the free market, that is, a market he is free to rule, owning much of the Dominican's land, resources, factories, and industries. It's estimated that he potentially owned up to 60% of the country's GDP. Talk about a monopoly. Well, for all the thousands of people who died under Trujillo's rule, at least it was somewhat stable, attracting foreign development to the country and having the government invest heavily to build a new nation with new industry. You know, since the guy in charge had so much personally invested in it. Well, whatever, the U.S. kept him around since he kept pumping out and expanding that sweet, sweet sugar production. Plus, they feared the entire nation falling apart if he was killed, which might have been exactly what happened. See, Trujillo really hated the Venezuelan president Romulo Betancourt, even attempting to get him assassinated Whoa! in 1960. That's kind of awkward for the U.S. Can't have your sugar supplier trying to kill the head of your oil supplier, so they cut ties with Trujillo and imposed sanctions on the nation. Not really surprising that one year later, Trujillo was assassinated himself. Holy. Yo. That is. Wow. Well, he went out with a bang. All right, put down your tomatoes. Put down your tomatoes. Put down your tomatoes. It was funny. Somebody laughed. Somebody laughed. 
This broke a centralized system and civil war broke out in 1965 followed by US occupation until 1966. And finally the Dominican really started to grow, which we'll talk about in the section on their economy. Haiti also had their own dictator, actually two of them. Francois Duvalier took power in 1957, but you might know him better as Papa Doc. There are three things Papa Doc loved most, violence, power, and voodoo, usually combining all three. Like Trujillo's regime, Haiti became a military dictatorship run by his Tonton Makout, aka the Boogeyman, silencing okay. political opposition, rigging elections. All right, I, I, I just got to say that that is frightening, and I would purposely, if I saw that walking down the street, I would just like, okay, okay, I don't need to pick up groceries today. That is, whoo. Cutting ties with pretty much everyone diplomatically except Ethiopia, killing up to 60,000 citizens. 60,000? With many more fleeing the nation, and practically praising himself as a god among men chosen to lead Haiti to glory. If that glory means stealing government funds, taking Haitian owned businesses for yourself, and stealing foreign aid, then yeah, I guess he was chosen to rule Haiti. Members of his boogeymen were often not even given an official salary, forcing them to loot and extort citizens to make a living for themselves. Themselves. Papa Doc was very much like the French elite of colonial Haiti, extraction by the elites for the simple purpose of enriching themselves with no plan of developing Haiti further. When he died in 1971, his son Jean-Claude Duvalier, aka Baby Doc, took rule. Haitians really like their nicknames, huh? Baby Doc's rule was more or less the same as his papa's, just a little less strict. But still, no questioning him and the country is made for him to get rich. The rulers failed to maintain public services and infrastructure, sinking Haiti more into poverty. But unlike Papa Doc, Baby Doc was just a little bebe. He was only 19 years old when he took power. We can beat him, said the people, so the 1980s were a time of protests, unrest, and riots. Did they get what they wanted? A rich and free Haiti? No, but Baby Doc fled to France in 1986, leaving Haiti in freefall. He actually returned in 2011 and was charged with corruption and embezzlement, so I guess it has a nice ending. So while the Duvaliers failed to develop Haiti, Trujillo developed the Dominican Republic but as his own private business, both stealing from their people. Which one ended up better? The Dominican did, by a long shot, but that's not to say it's a rich nation nowadays. In the 80s, it was among the poorest nations in the Americas, and nowadays it's comparable to a middle-income nation like Mexico. Driving this growth was a switch in strategy from sugar to spice, spice meaning mm -hmm. industry and tourism. They set up industrial free zones for manufacturing, tax-free ports for exporting the newly made goods, and diversified more into mining, construction, electronics, and okay, still a lot of farming. However, from a past full of monopoly abuses, Dominican small firms remain fairly uninnovative and rather inefficient today. In fact, only three firms make up around 96% of the sugar produced in the country. Wow. Still, this growth has made this half of the island increasingly middle class and urban, summed up by the greatest Dominican invention of all time, the speaker van. <laughs> Tourism exploded at the same time. Hold on, we're going to listen to that again. Tourism exploded at the same time too. 1984 was the first year when tourism revenue brought in more money than sugar did. Yet to be fair, sugar prices were some of the lowest they've ever been at the time. Yeah, uh oh man. Looks like people are getting off that addiction. Gotta do something quickly. The Dominican is the biggest tourist destination in the Caribbean, when it's between them, a failed state, a highly restrictive state, or tiny islands with not nearly as many resources available to build resorts, it's no wonder they attract tourists so well. Tourism is their new cash crop. Sell mojitos on the beach instead of the sugar used to make that mojito. Tourism accounts now for over 25% of their GDP, whereas sugar fell to less than 1% of their total exports. Whoa! Yet tourism also uses over 40% of their energy, and tourists generate 40% of the Ew. nation's waste. Ew. Hey, maybe they sold out their part of the island, but it might be worth it for that 6% growth rate since 2010, the highest in the Americas today. Haiti did not have that option. Today, it is much, much poorer, much more violent, more unstable, has nearly a 10-year lower life expectancy, and it's just not a great vacation spot. Over 80% of the population is in poverty, and just to say it one more time, much of the population relies on subsistence agriculture for food security. 
decentralized gangs fight for business in the country with around 40% of Port-au-Prince controlled by them, leadership changes quickly as presidents and politicians are killed and they fight against nature in terms of soil erosion, floods, hurricanes, and earthquakes. With the worst ever being in 2010, almost a quarter million died, 1.3 million people were displaced, and 70% of the nation's crops were destroyed. With rampant corruption in foreign aid and a tiny pot of actual wealth, Haiti can't afford the proper training or infrastructure to make mass earthquake-proof buildings. So in 2021, another earthquake destroyed almost 150,000 buildings, 2,000 lives, and 11% of GDP from the previous year. Haiti now essentially relies on the USA for aid but much of it is inefficient, mm. often going to the politicians' pockets instead of the people's, for trade with 80% of their exports going to the states, and for the future with Haitians increasingly running away as fast as they can to the U.S. with emigrants tripling from 1990 to 2018. The nation's debts, decentralization, borderline fearful trade policies, and foreign interventions kept it poor. But in good news, they're planting thousands of trees. Hopefully that can fix all their problems. Now go check out Mr. Beat's all right wow wow um a, t a, a tale of two islands um okay i want to know more so to our viewing audience because yes we do read the comment section uh you know your feedback is fundamentally important to our youtube channel and um, i guess the content that all of us together can enjoy um are there any other videos? Obviously, maybe I should check out uh, this other video. Uh, if that's something that would interest you, uh, give us your feedback. Is there anything else that we should learn about, especially about Haiti or the Dominican Republic? Uh, if we have any viewing members that are from the, uh, Haiti or the Dominican Republic, um, kind of give us your feedback. What are your thoughts on this video? Um, because I am completely uh, flabbergasted. There you go. That's, that's, that's a good word to use. Um, in regards not only to the divergence of these two nations on this one island, but overall the brutal and bloody and horrific history to so many people dying, unchecked dictators and tyrants and warlords and gang leaders, um, foreign influence and so much more. Uh, I guess I got a hunger for knowledge. And the only way I'm going to know is if there's any other videos that we should check out here on this channel. So, um, Type in the comment section below your overall uh, thoughts on this video. Is this the kind of content you guys like us checking out here on this channel? And uh, finally, last one, too, in regards to the World War One question I asked, um, because I, I guess maybe there was a, a, a real legitimate fear of, I guess, the German Empire, Germania, um, maybe coming into the Western Hemisphere and instigating some problems. But if there's a video that does a proper breakdown in regards towards I guess, how the United States uh, felt or what their policy was towards the German Empire during the First World War. Um, send us a link uh, because I guess the I guess there was a lot of concern of why, why the U.S. would want to maybe intervene, obviously for its own self-interest, but I guess for some legitimate concerns of what the German Empire could do if it could launch an expedition here. But uh, yeah, I... I, 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 I am, I, I, that, that's another thing that kind of just shocked me in this video. The fact that there was concern of the German empire coming here to the United States or to the Western hemisphere during the first world war. So, um, if there's something we should check out, let us know. Uh, otherwise, please take good care of yourselves. Keep your head on a swivel, keep drinking water, keep on being awesome because you are awesome. And, uh, I'll see all of you on the flip side. Peace.